Good Thursday evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. That Fuzz and 518 show. Doing it once again like we always do every Thursday evening. Glad you guys could join in. Glad you guys are hell of a show tonight. You guys are not going to be disappointed. It's a great show. Great causes. We got a lot of stuff going on, guys. Alyssa Carapri's interview tonight. Um, it is pre-recorded. I'm going to let you know now. We recorded it Tuesday. Um, Alyssa has a very crazy schedule. Um, she's in bed early, up up early. So right now she's probably in dreamland, dreaming about um, cold fronts and 
cloud formations and stuff like that. But um, we're here. We do have the interview. We're going to play it for you in its entirety, and it does not disappoint for sure. Um, it was fun. She's she's a great person to sit down and talk to. Um, I, honestly, I was a little nervous. The first uh, first two minutes or so for me are a little rough, um, but you can kind of see me like settle down and get into the groove, and uh, it was fun. A lot of fun to, to talk to her and stuff. So um, we raised a lot of money. We'll get into that in a minute, though. Um, oh, what was I going to start with? I was going to start with something different than I was. Oh, I know what I was going to start with. Um, we'll start again on a low note. We'll get the low notes out of the way, and then we'll go. Well, we'll go high. Um, I do have to send a shout out to Holly and Scott Sta. Um, unfortunately, uh, Quinn. Um, passed away. So, um, condolences to you guys. Quinn was a super cool cat, man. He, the story behind Quinn is even better. Um, uh, so if you guys, if you guys know Holly, then ask her the story of Quinn because it's a really, really cool story. And uh, yeah, he went from being a feral cat to to theirs. He didn't want to leave him, so I guess he kind of chose them, which is cool. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, he passed away. I believe it was yesterday, maybe this morning. I'm not sure. It was yesterday though. So, uh, Holly Scott, my heart goes out to you guys. Um, definitely sorry for the loss. Quinn was awesome for sure. Uh, let's talk to Nippertown Calendar. Nippertown.com has a little calendar on there. It is um, where you go to find what's going on in the capital region as far as music, those music y concert type things. Um, you can go to Nippertown.com up in the, there's a little uh, navigation bar in the front. First one says calendar. Click on calendar. Pick the day that you want to go out and then uh, pick whatever item that you want to choose. Whatever one you want to go to. It'll give you all the information right there. But go check it out. Nippertown.com. Go check out Nippertown.com, period. Um, you'll see a bunch of stuff there. There's uh, music reviews. There's restaurant reviews. There's listen, anything 518 or 838 now that I've learned. Um, if it's in our area, man, it's going on in Nippertown. If it's not, we'll get it up there ASAP for you guys. How's that sound? Uh, Gemfest. Let's talk about Gemfest for a minute and the boat cruises. We'll do both of them at the same time. How's that sound? Gemfest 2021 is August 7th at the Shirt Factory in Glens Falls. Tickets are available on Eventbrite. $12 a piece, close to 20 bands for 12 bucks. How can you beat it? All day deal, guys. There's also going to be a bunch of artists there, um, probably more than 20 of them. For more information, you guys can look at uh, Facebook. There's a GemFest page, I believe, available. And also information is on ralphrenna.com. You guys can go check that out. So these boat cruises. I have a, a, a handful of cards here for boat cruises. Now, mind you, there's only like 130 tickets for these. And they go really, really fast. As a matter of fact, some of these may be already gone. But um, as far as I know, there's only one that's completely sold out. But there was other ones I know had like literally six tickets left when I talked to the guy, the, one of the guys the other day. So if you guys want to go on these boat cruises, make sure you get your tickets early and, I mean, check and see if they're still available now. August 13th on the Dutch Apple, that's where all these are. Uh, it's the Friday the 13th crew featuring Faced, the Phoenix and the Raven, and Psycho Mantium. 7 p.m. sharp, guys. That boat leaves at 7 p.m. Um, get your tickets to their bands. 701, you're probably going to be making a jump for it, and you probably don't want to be in the Hudson. Just saying. August 20th, Dirt Church bonus, lifelong death, the Lunkheads and Jay Frost. Again, in the Dutch Apple. Guys, hit these guys up for tickets as quick as you can because once they're gone, sold out. And there's only they 130 is 130. They don't they don't allow any extras on there. So August 28th on the Dutch Apple, Crimson Mask, Breathless by Dawn, and Winter's Burden. That's gonna be an amazing show. Winter's Burden making their triumphant return 7 p.m. again. Sharp guys. Tickets through the bands, the lovely Miss Tabs back on stage and Spin kicking the hell out of your face. Uh, the Power, Balor and Malefic is going to be on September 3rd. Again, 7 p.m. Talk to the bands about that one. And September 4th, Downswing, Wrong Move and Brick by Brick. That one, folks, unfortunately is sold out. So if you didn't get your tickets for that, you missed the boat. You guys knew I was going to say that because I say it pretty much every week. So Capital Underground is on uh, exclusively on NipperDown.com. Capital Underground episode 19 is the last one that was out on Monday. Usually they come out Monday mornings around nine o'clock, sometimes ten. Um, depends. We gotta we gotta send the uh, send the wake up squad over to wake Ralph up. But uh, no, 
He's usually up wicked, wicked early. Uh, yeah, episode 19 just came out. Um, touching that 40,000 listener point, dude. Man, I mean, he is just killing it with that. You guys go check that out. It is exclusively on Nippertown.com, Capital Underground. Also, check out ShuffleExtreme.com. That is the little internet radio gig that Ralph's got going on. Music, music, music. Wall-to-wall music. It's good stuff right there. Um, I am doing more reaction videos. I haven't lately because, um, A, I've been lazy. B, I've been busy. So, um, reaction videos are coming back to YouTube. They're YouTube exclusive. That's where that's where you guys will find them. It's youtube.com slash that fuzzing 518 show. And of course, we're going to plug the social medias in a minute, guys. But, um, stop over YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, like on the some of the videos. And, um, the reaction ones are fun to do. Because you, it's just, I mean, I'm doing music and I'm doing episodes of the TV show Cops. Fun, 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 fun to do. And, uh, hey, if you guys want to do some reaction videos with me, hit me up. We'll try that. Why not, right? So, again, that's YouTube.com slash That Fuzzing 510. Oh, Jesus Christ. Here we go. YouTube.com slash That Fuzzing 518 Show. I got to slow down. Facebook.com slash That Fuzzing 518 Show. Insta and TikTok, we are at That Fuzzing 518 Show also. All of these guys, subscribe, follow, like, and share, share, share away. Um, sharing is caring. Sharing is where it's at, guys. So um, let's build this community. You know what I'm saying? What's next? Um, so, okay. I got to give you guys a little backstory for this interview. Then we'll get into the interview. I do have a couple of videos I'm going to play tonight. I'm going to play one from Selfish Needy Creatures. Um, and I'm also going to play Faced tonight. So... Got two videos coming your way after the interview, of course. Um, okay, so you guys know my wacky ideas for this show come when I'm awake at like between 2 a.m. and 6, somewhere around there. After 6, I'm just tired and, and whatever comes out is just dumb, but I get these crazy ideas, right? So sitting in the recliner, checking out the weather for the day. Of course, I watch CBS 6 exclusively. Um, a, because Alyssa's a great meteorologist and B, I mean, let's be honest. She's definitely easy on the eyes, fellas and some ladies. So I'm watching the news and I'm watching the weather and I picked up my phone and Alyssa had just come out to do the weather, I picked up my phone and I went to open Facebook and I hit Instagram by accident. Now I, I do really, I rarely go on Instagram, I'm not on there all that much. Um, I should be on there more posting stuff, and I apologize for that. But um, So I open it up, and what's on there? But Alyssa's on Instagram, and she's talking about something. I had the volume down. So we turn the volume up. She's talking about this Make-A-Wish thing that she's doing called Wish Jump. Um, now, Wish Jump is, well, she'll explain it to you in the, in the video. But. So, mind you, it's like 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, right? Fuzzy says, oh, I got an idea. She should probably come on this show and talk about that. Right? I was like, yeah, okay, right. So next thing I know, I'm opening up the messenger, and I shot her a message on Instagram. Explained the show. Said, hey, you know, you should come on. We'll promote the whatever I said. It was I, I was very, very polite, very professional. I was a good boy. And um, so I didn't hear anything, of course, that day. I didn't hear anything. I'm like, yeah. I know she's not going to message me back, you know. The next morning, I'm watching the news again, and I get a message from Instagram, which I rarely get. And I'm like, open up. It's her. That sounds great. She'd love to. I was pretty shocked. I was like, whoa. So I messaged her back something, and she typed, yeah, that sounds great. And then, like, 10 seconds later, she's coming out on this. I'm like, man, she's good. So she answered my message and then walked right out into the news. It's pretty cool. So now, of course, again, that day when she said she would do it, the wheels start turning in my head. And it's again, it's before the six o'clock point. So the idea was pretty good. I said, if I, I'm gonna donate some money to it so that she she gets excited about it. I said, and I'm gonna call Jim, Nipper Town Jim, the mayor, and see if he'll match it. Of course, I, the, the second I asked him, he's like, oh, absolutely. I'll match it. Absolutely. So um, I talked to Ralph from Capital Underground and told him what I was doing. And he was like, oh, I'll match that too. So now we're at 150. I'm like, 
Wow, that's that's pretty crazy. So who else who else do you think matches? I'm like, so if I can get her on the interview to say, well, that wasn't five hundred eight. She was going to donate fifty dollars, and right before she reacts, I'm like, and Jim from Nippertown is going to match that. And right before she reacts again, don't give her the chance to, you know, you just keep hitting her, you know. And Ralph from Capital Hunter is going to do it. And I'm like, how many more ands can I get? So I was talking to Ralph, and Ralph said, oh, let me put some feelers out, put some phone calls out. So he did that. I posted. I made a couple phone calls. And we have um, a ton. We got a ton of uh, a ton of donations. Pretty, pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thank the people that donated right now because um, without them, this video is not as cool as – it could have been, you know, it's not as cool as it, it, it wouldn't be as cool as it was without them. So, of course, we have that wasn't 518 show, of course, Nipper Town and Capital Underground, the big three. Now, after that, we have hip hop artist bonus matched to 50, Mike Norman from Grace Under Fire matched to 50, my favorite, the Empire Pickle Company of Grand Island, Florida matched 50. The Grandstand Jockeys matched with a 50. Indigo Rose Riki matched with 50. This one, my man, Brian Cavanaugh, and I love this shirt. Brian, thank you so much for your generosity and the help that you gave me. Now, with Brian's help, we also got a $50 gift card. So I'm sorry, two $25 gift cards. So it's $50 to Otis and Oliver's. And also two gift cards to the Tipsy Moose in Latham or Troy. Otis and Oliver's is in Latham, by the way. So the thing with that is, guys, um, they don't accept gift cards. So what I figured I would do is I'm going to give out my Venmo. First 50 takes the first set, and I'll just pick one and give it to you. Or you can say which one you want in the Venmo. First Venmo of $50 or more. You don't have to do, you don't have to do this 50. You know, it is for... Make a wish. It's for a good cause. So $50 to my Venmo. First one, $50 plus dollars. Let's say that. The Venmo is at Fuzzy518. And I think you need a capital F on it. But it's at Fuzzy518. First 50 in the Venmo gets one set. Second Venmo, second 50 or plus or more in the Venmo gets the second set. So um, first and second Ven for the first and second 50s or more. In the Venmo, grabs a set of those. We also had um, uh, Darla from Chrome Food and Spirits. She matched as well. So Collar City Painting, this is a good one now. Collar City Painting double matched it. So they gave 100 which was amazing. So all in total with, um, with the gift cards and that 50, let's see, it was, oh, geez, what the hell was it? The I'm totally lost now. Um, I think we got her like 750. I think we're up to 750 now. That should be 750, I believe. So yeah, it's like crazy, crazy amount of money we got. So um, I'll leave that up to you guys. Those those were all the, the the generous generous donations, and I can't thank you enough because you'll see in the video what those donations did um, to the interview. It brought it from like a uh, a seven to uh, uh, it went to 11. It was like spinal tap, it went to 11. It was awesome. I had a great time, um, talking to Alyssa. She's very, very, very easy to talk to. Um, it was a great interview. We learned a little bit about her career, where she's been in life. We learned about her dog, Allie, a little bit, and then the magic happened with the donations because she had no clue, she had no idea that we were gonna. Help with donations, nothing like that. She, I think she thought we were just kind of like hanging out. So I'm going to leave this up for the whole show. So the about down here is the link directly to her, to her, um, her, her campaign for the fundraiser. That right there, it is case sensitive too. So the capital S L Z has to be capitalized. So make sure you guys write it down the correct way. Um, if you guys want to donate, there's still time. Um, I believe it's next week, maybe until next week, something like that. But there's still time. You guys can donate directly to that. 
And even if you guys don't eat just to make a wish, it's well worth it because I mean, there it is right there. It's it, the money stays local. This, all this money that they're collecting stays local to grant local wishes stays in the 518 E3 area. So it's, perfect it's just an awesome make a wish is a great foundation um they're, they're so awesome so you know give what you guys can again first and second 50s in the venmo first and second 50 pluses in the venmo get um a set of gift cards worth 50 dollars each so you get uh either tipsy moose 50 dollars or otis dollars 50 dollars all right did i cover everything holy jesus christ i'm freaking out over here okay so yeah, the interview was amazing. I am going to. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take any more of your time. Notice we turned the lights blue too, because blue and white is, um, make a wishes colors. I had white up there for the interview. I had to go back to green. Something's got to stay green. I just can't. It's it's just me, guys. So without further ado, I will play you the Alyssa Carabrese interview, and uh, we'll come right back after it's over and talk more business. So here we go. All right, guys, we have a very special guest today. Um, she really doesn't need any introduction, but we are going to introduce her anyways so that you guys can uh, know who we're talking about here. She is the morning meteorologist for CBS 6 and, quite frankly, the only meteorologist in my eyes that makes a difference around here. She's pretty awesome. Um, please welcome to our little show, Alyssa Caropreeze. Good Hi, morning, evening, afternoon. How are you today? <laughs> Doing well. How are you? I'm pretty good. First off, um, thank you for taking your time to hang out with us today. Um, for those of you who don't know, Alyssa is on a campaign. Um, it's called Wish Jump for Make a Wish of Northeast New York. And we'll definitely get to talk about that in a little bit. First, we're going to kind of talk to you about your career and get to know you a little bit. And then we will go straight into um, the Make a Wish because I'm, I'm pretty excited about your campaign. So my first question is, what what actually got you into meteorology? <laughs> it, it's like, the, honestly, the easiest answer. I just have loved it since I was a kid. That's it, which is actually very typical for people in the meteorology field, whether you work on TV or don't. Mm -hmm. Usually there's something from your childhood that kind of sparks your passion for it, whether it's, you know, living through some sort of weather event or I don't know, whatever it may be. To be honest, I don't know what it was that made me so intrigued by the weather, but since I was little, I just always had a fascination with the weather. Even though I was like scared of lightning and scared of thunderstorms, I was scared of the wind, petrified, but I just always loved the weather. I always watched the Weather Channel. I always wrote down everybody who worked for the Weather Channel and their title. Mm -hmm. Um, and I tried to do a lot of science projects on the weather. So it was just something that I always loved. Well, that's cool. See me, I was always, I was a space geek. So I wanted to be either an astronaut or a garbage man. That was my I two. think astronauts are the coolest and smartest people on our planet. I mean, think about how smart you have to be to literally go into outer space and like work on the space station. It blows my mind. Actually, the, uh, the, the, the breaking news of today was what a half an hour ago. Jeff right. Bezos was in space. Like, yeah, did you watch it? I did. I did. I did I'll too. Tell you. Pretty Absolutely. cool. I was like, oh my God. I know. And then when they landed in Texas, I'm like, all right, I need to know, like, what are their thoughts? Like, watching them walk off, like, the whatever it was called capsule. The little capsule, yeah. Yeah, it was wild. So, yeah, history being made this week. Pretty crazy. Yeah, I, watched, I watched Richard Branson's too. That was really cool. Like, would you go up? If I had the money, oh my God, absolutely. You would? Oh, See, yeah. I'm obviously like all about science, but I don't think I would do it. Not yet. It's a little too much for me. Yeah, you maybe <laughs> like work the bugs out a little bit, then, then we'll take a trip, you know? <laughs> so how much schooling is involved in in, in becoming a meteorologist? I, you have a... Uh, um, bachelor's. Bachelor's, that's right. Yeah, I was going to say master's, but master's, bachelor's, yes. Yeah, um, you don't, you actually don't need your master's if you're going into television. It just really depends on what you're interested in doing. I think if you're going into research, you probably would go for your master's, but you know, you can work for forecasting, whether it be on TV or in the private sector, working for some private company that does forecasting for other companies. 
and um, you don't need to go beyond four years. So, but a lot of people don't realize that the schooling is very intense to become a meteorologist. Um, it's very math and science based, obviously science based, but before you get into like your core um, meteorology classes and like the forecasting, there's a lot of like prereqs and that includes usually um, calcs one through four and a lot of physics and chemistry, all of that's kind of required before you start getting into actually learning about the major, mm -hmm. and learning about weather. So it's can be tough. Math is usually the main reason why people drop the major. That would be why I would drop it. That would be exactly why I would drop it, you know? Um, <laughs> so give us a little timeline of, um, of of where you've been and what you've done. You you had some pretty cool internships, I saw. Um, tell us about some of those, if you wouldn't mind, and um, where that took you, and then how you wound up landing in the uh, in the capital region. All right. So my internships were I had two in television, and one was working for NASA, but it sounds a lot cooler than it was. Um, I worked. I didn't work at NASA. It was just an internship through NASA, and I actually did it on campus at my college, which was, I went to Rutgers, because um, I am from New Jersey. So yeah, I was working on um, actually um, someone, I think it was a graduate um, who was who was working on um, developing like a winter storm scale. So basically for winter storms, you know, how like we have scales for hurricanes, and for earthquakes, not that earthquakes are meteorology, but anyway, it was basically assigning a winter storm to a scale just so you had like a level of degree of how strong the winter storm was. So that was what I worked on when I interned for NASA, but we did go um, every like week or other week into New York City and touch base with people who were also interning for the same program, but in different locations. So we would go into the city to the Goddard Institute of Space Studies, and that was what my internship was through. So but I knew I wanted to do TV. So that's always what my um, focus was. So I interned for News 12 and then I interned, which is in New Jersey, well, one of their locations in New Jersey. And then I interned for um, WABC in the city. So that's kind of how you start learning about the TV industry because honestly in college, my major was strictly meteorology, no broadcasting involved. So I learned what little there was to learn from an internship. And then once you get into your first job, it's kind of like a smack in the face of all this information and it's a little much, but that's when you learn the most at your right. first job. So where did that take you from? Where did that take you after college? Where which was your first, like uh, your first meteorology job? That was in Oregon, in oh, wow. Medford, Oregon, Southern Oregon. And I'm from Jersey, so it was literally as far away as I could get, which was not intentional, but, you know, I I wanted to not really waste any time, to be honest, after I graduated. So, yeah, I took the job, and um, it was really far. It was so culturally different, and that I hated, but I learned a lot from my first job, and um, I was there for two years, and it was um, a huge learning experience and also a big personal learning experience, too, because you're totally on your own and sure. you learn a lot about yourself. Oh, yeah. And then that brought you back to here? Yeah. So I was there for two years, just wrote out my contract, and then I knew I wanted to be obviously closer to family. Um, and being here, I'm a three-hour, very easy drive home to my family. And um, that was what was most important to me. And I just wanted to be, I love the weather of the Northeast. You know, we have all four seasons. I appreciate every single one of them. I, I literally like really enjoy the weather. I truly mm -hmm. do. So uh, the changing of the seasons makes things very interesting for me. And I think we get a little bit of everything from severe weather to winter weather. Things are always interesting. And that was what was important for me. Um, and I've I've stayed here now. I've been here like six and a half years. It's been a long time. You definitely picked the right spot because there's never a dull moment with the weather up here. It's, you know. <laughs> it's, you know I know, especially day, as of lately. The next, you know? My goodness, the amount of times lately people have been like, please make the rain stop. I'm like. Like, like you can control it, right? I know. <laughs> turn switches on and off. Like, yeah, we'll get some <laughs> little hail today, a little wind, you know. Um, <laughs> So I'd be making a lot more money if I could control the weather. Yeah, oh, you ain't kidding. Um, <laughs> so take me through a typical day of yours. You have kind of crazy hours, I understand. Yes. 
Okay, so a lot of people don't realize, though, that people that work in TV, especially what you see on camera, like the anchors, I think a lot of people, well, I think that social media has made it much more um, transparent what our jobs entail. But before like Facebook Live and those things came about, a lot of people used to think that we would just come into work and literally just stand in front of the camera and read something. And um, that's that's certainly not the way it goes. Obviously, my job's a little different from the news anchors. Um, they are reading a script, but they still have a lot of work that goes into getting a newscast on the air and making sure. it go on the air smoothly. Um, for weather, um, I come into work very early. Our show starts at 4.30, so I'm in way before that. I usually don't say the exact time just for safety reasons, but... Sure, yeah. um, so I come in really early. I usually come in in sweatpants. My hair's wet after taking a shower and first thing I do is forecast. So I'm throwing together the forecast actually on a sheet of paper. This is this morning's forecast. Yeah, so it just says, you know, today, awesome. tonight, tomorrow, mm -hmm. and so on for the next seven days. Throw the forecast together and then I'll touch base with my producer and let them know what's going on for the weather, if it's a big weather day or not. Then I make all the graphics. So everything I go on the air with, all the maps, all of that gets updated every morning by me. And then once that's done, I'll go to the makeup room, do my hair and makeup myself. People don't do it for us. <laughs> they do, but usually only in like really big cities. Usually sure, someone's sure. paying to have it done unless you're on like network. Um, so yeah, I'll get ready for the show and then usually we record a little something before the show, do our broadcast while I'm on air for quite some time. We're in show for about three and a half hours and then I'm on air after that for just a couple of small hits for another hour record some more stuff after the show. And then, yeah, in the meantime, I do radio while the show's going on. Some stuff's recorded, some stuff's live, get the website updated, social media, just a lot of stuff. Very, <laughs> very, very busy. Yeah. So that's that's kind of what my workday entails. Now, does severe weather alter that schedule or... So usually severe weather, since it's in the afternoon and evening, doesn't really impact my shift because I'm working the mornings. Mm -hmm. um, and usually, you know, we get it from unstable air, which tends to, you know, we were the most unstable in the afternoon and evenings. So for me, it doesn't really impact me. That would be the other meteorologists that are kind of responsible for covering that. But in the winter time, often if we're, you know, looking at a winter storm, I will stay late and keep working. So it's more winter weather on the morning shift. Got you. Now, is there anything that you dislike about your job? Um, I think probably a couple things. I, I truly love what I do, but one of the biggest things, which I love and hate at the same time, it's fun getting dressed up every day and having to look nice. But at the same time, it can be the biggest pain in the butt, especially like, if you're not feeling well on a day you have to come in and work anyway um and get all dolled up it's not fun when you're not feeling great and i also can't just wake up in the morning and take a sick day because when i'm coming into work everyone's sleeping right so if it's like the day before and i'm not feeling well and i'm like uh oh, probably not going to feel great tomorrow i'll have to arrange with a coworker to have them come in and cover for me the next day and then also, um, I am a very transparent, open person, so I don't mind sharing my life with um, with viewers. But um, I found since I've been in television now for, it's been almost 10 years, sometimes when there's stuff going on in your life, it can be a little challenging. Like for instance, dating, going through breakups, like viewers get to know a certain person that yeah. you're dating. And then if you're not with them anymore, everyone's wondering where they went, but you feel uncomfortable just feeling like, hey, everyone, we're not together anymore. So right. that can be weird. And then also dating people. It's weird because you're a, per you're a person on TV and they can like basically watch you and make judgments about you before you can get to know someone. So that can be a little weird. It's something I think a lot of people don't really think of when you're in the public eye, but it comes with the job. So, I mean, as far as dating goes, and I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, get too into your personal life. Like, do you have people that, that try to date you just because you're on TV? Well, I mean, there's definitely a lot of people, um, 
there's a lot of inappropriate people out there, I think. People that are behind a computer and think it's okay to say a lot of things that you would never say in person. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think there's people that reach out through Messenger, Instagram, Facebook, but sometimes they just get so many messages, I simply can't open them all. Of so, course, yeah. you know, I try and do the best I can, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know, that's the world we live in. Well, I'm glad you opened mine, that's for sure. <laughs> I know, I did happen to open yours on a whim, and here we are. <laughs> and here we are. So we're gonna transition into the Make-A-Wish, but I have one more question for you. Tell okay. us a little bit about this dude named Ollie. Ali, my angel. That's right. <laughs> Ali is my golden doodle. I'm obsessed with him. Um, he's going to be four in September, which is crazy. But yeah, he's my dog. And I'm obsessed with all dogs, but especially doodles. He is a mini doodle. So he's not, because, you know, the full size ones can be huge. But he's like 45 pounds. And um, I'm obsessed with him. He's my angel. Yeah, if you guys have never seen Ollie, he is the definition of the flip side of the pill. He's that cool. So You know, it's funny. Ollie actually gets recognized sometimes now. We're always outside on walks, and sometimes people will be like, is that Ollie? And I'm like, yeah, who are you? <laughs> so just <laughs> random people, you know, happen to recognize us, but they'll mention Ollie first. Nothing about me. It's just like, is yeah, that right. Ollie? Thanks, guys. You know, Isn't right? that funny? Okay, so let's get into this whole Make-A-Wish thing because I'm excited about this. Um, it is called Wish Jump, correct? Yes. And you usually work with um, Make-A-Wish through the station. Yeah, so every year I, I work with Make-A-Wish Make for um, the kickoff of their holiday campaign. Um, so, you know, like anytime you're in the mall and you see those those um, Make-A-Wish stars, you can adopt a wish and that money will go straight toward Make-A-Wish and granting wishes. So um, I work with them for kind of the kickoff event and then also my station has started a telethon now um, called Day of Wishes where we're raising money and that's every year in December and that also is going toward granting wishes. So I've I've been working with them for years now and I always look forward to it. It's always a fun time. I really love everyone at Make-A-Wish, but to know that like you're helping out families and kids and um, it's 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 a foundation that everyone's familiar with too. So people people know what what the money's going toward. They're familiar with um, how it works. And I think that's, you know, really important too. Well, thank you for doing that because it's I mean, it's 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 an awesome cause and um so thank you for for helping out with that. So let's talk about this whole wish jump thing. What's what's going on with wish jump now? It's funny. Wish jump is um, this fundraiser where whoever's interested can raise money for Make a Wish. Again, the money goes straight toward kids in our area, so five one eight and eight three eight area codes, um, toward granting wishes directly toward kids with critical illnesses and granting their wishes. By the way, average cost of a wish is $12,000, um, which you know is a pretty steep price, but that's that's the average cost. And so it's important all year long that we're raising money. So Make-A-Wish has all these different fundraisers throughout the year. Well, this is one that's done every, every year on um, this time of year in, in the summer. And whoever's interested in raising the money, if they meet a certain goal, um, which is $1,000, then whoever, you know, made the goal gets together at the end of the fundraiser and goes skydiving. Um, what's cool about it is that it's the only Make-A-Wish chapter in the country that does this fundraiser. It's super cool. It's a way for people to get together, raise money for a good cause, and then um, do something different. It's not like a walk, you know, it's not some sort of charity event that everyone goes to. It's just a way for people to get together and celebrate raising money for these families that um, need a break and need something to get their mind off of their usually child who's suffering from a critical illness. Sure. And and the money that's raised from this stays in, in the 518 and 838. Yeah, that was so the that's, additional that's area really cool. code after the 518 got tapped out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, the money literally goes directly toward granting wishes. 
um, for kids in our area. So it stays completely local and literally it goes straight toward that. Also make a wish obviously with the pandemic had to put the travel wishes on hold, but our chapter as of this fall will be um, getting back to granting travel wishes um, oh, now that great. the vaccine is more widely available. So, so yeah, so things are slowly getting back to normal and just trying to, you know, do my part and help raise some money for Make-A-Wish. That's awesome. So, but yeah, so this is not affiliated with the station, just doing this personally. Right, I was at a right. Make-A-Wish event a few weeks ago and I was chatting with everyone and um, this fundraiser got brought up and I was like, sure, let's do it. So here we are. So anybody that's, so anybody that's tuned in watching all that stuff, right below right down here, here is the link to, the link to, um, um, to, to directly to Melissa's campaign. Um, you can donate money there if you would like to. We would definitely appreciate you doing that. Um, so you're actually going to jump out of a plane then? Yeah, the fundraiser actually, um, well, the skydiving event is this weekend. <laughs> so are you excited and, about doing that? Or are, you, are you scared, I'm, excited? I'm pretty stoked, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I have never gone skydiving before. I'm not afraid of heights. I'm into the whole adrenaline thing. So I'm looking forward to it. But I'm sure when I'm like literally in the plane about to jump off, I'm probably going to be, you know, shaking, <laughs> super nervous. <laughs> so now are you, is the, the, you're, I, I was looking at the website and I know your campaign is kind of like on a, are you like on a team with other people? Is that, or is that Yeah. Just so you know what? I decided to just do this by myself. There are teams. I think they stuck me on a team because I was browsing around too and I can see what the, team total is, mm -hmm. um, which last I checked, which was days ago, um, was like over 12,000. Yes. So um, I, I must be on someone's team, but I looked at the names. I didn't recognize any of the names. So I'm I'm not totally sure about that. But but yeah, the, the link will take you directly just to my page, which yes. the money still goes straight toward Make-A-Wish. I don't even touch the money. Sure, um, sure. Yeah, it's just set up through Make-A-Wish. But you'll so see my page. There. You had a you had a personal goal that you're over now, right? Yeah, it was just a thousand. Let me tell you, I hate asking people for money, mm -hmm. uh, but Make a Wish is a great cause. Um, it makes me uncomfortable badgering people or asking someone to donate, especially you know when you're talking money. And it's been a tough year and a half for everyone. But I thought, all right, let's see if we can do it. See if I can get to a thousand dollars. Um, you know, every little bit helps. I started off. The fundraiser, I donated $50 and then I started reaching out to some friends and um, I've exceeded that goal, but I'm going to obviously still keep trying to raise money. It's going it's sure. going to help kids and um, just doing my part, trying to raise whatever I can. Yeah, your goal was a thousand. You were at fifteen fifty the other day. I don't know if that's changed or not. Um, yeah, I think I'm still at fifteen fifty. Okay, so. I told you earlier that I had a surprise for you. You said you were intrigued. Yeah. So surprise me. <laughs> here's the surprise. Um, I talked to my executive producer who it's just title only. He really does nothing. He's pretty lazy. <laughs> he's wrong. So um, my show, that Fuzzing 518 show is going to donate $50 to the cause. Wonderful. Thank and you so much. I talked to Jim from Nippertown, nippertown.com. Okay. I'll give him a plug. And he's going to match that. Nice. Also, Ralph from Capital Underground is going to match that. <gasps> Yay! I'm also, so oh, let me get my list. The local hip hop artist, his name is Bonus. He matched it. What? Mike Normandin from Grace Under Fire matched it. That's a band. The Empire Pickle Company of Grand Island, Florida matched it. Oh my God! BEK Enterprises matched it. Are you kidding? The band, the grandstand jockeys matched it. Uh, I, and a Ricky, I, I always get this wrong. Indigo Rose Ricky matched it. Brian Cavanaugh, friend of mine, matched it. And oh Collar, City, Collar City Painting double matched it. So they gave $100. So oh after we're done here, I will, I'm going to donate all the money into it, into your, your campaign. We got you 600 bucks. Oh my God. Gosh, that's so amazing. I can literally not thank you enough. Wow, you've blown my mind. I can't well, believe it's, it. It's more of a thank you for doing what you do. And 
if it puts a smile on on just one kid's face, it's enough. You know what I mean? Oh my God, of course, every dollar helps. I mean, honestly, everyone just has to do their little part and together we'll do it one kid at a time. That is amazing, that right. honestly, I'm blown away. Wow. See, I told you, I told oh you, you were gonna love it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. Make a wish. Honestly, our local chapter, they will be so, so happy. Oh my That's goodness. Awesome. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Um, not You'll a have problem. to send me that list of everyone that donated. I'll reach out to them and thank them personally. I will for sure. Absolutely. Um, I, I mean, that's, I, I, I just, I, I want to tell people that it, there's still time um, the link, like I said, is right below. I got it listed down there. And as I'm doing a show on Thursday, cause we're pre-recording this, um, cause Alyssa goes to bed early, so we don't want to, we don't want to mess with her schedule. Cause I'll so be sleeping when you actually do the show. <laughs> we're recording this for Thursday night, but guys, uh, uh, you know, you can donate any little bit helps $5 or 5,000, whatever totally. you guys can give. It would be great. Um, again, the link is there and all during the show tomorrow, I'll, I'll definitely keep giving the link. Um, I'll post it to my page and hopefully a little bit more pours in. That'd be great. Wow, that is huge. I'm literally blown away. I can't believe it. Thank you so much. It is our pleasure. And listen, I will not take any more of your time. I know you're you're busy and you got stuff to do. So um you're doing amazing things for amazing people. And um definitely thank you for all that you do. And I definitely appreciate you coming on, joining us, hanging out. And um you're welcome back anytime if you have anything that you need um promoted plugged i usually tell people when i interview them that you are now an honorary degenerate because all my <laughs> all my people are degenerates but they're good degenerates. i feel so bad. honored <laughs> so now you're an honorary degenerate um anytime you want to come on shoot me a message we'll get you right on hang out and chat yeah well thank you so much honestly because you reached out to all those people i didn't do any of that fundraising so wow that is huge and Honestly, I can thank you enough. Oh my goodness, that is amazing. Thank no, thanks, you. Thanks, We are we are glad to help. So I will uh, I will take my leave of you. Um, again, thank you so much for coming in, and hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Okay, thank you so much. Have a great week. You too, ladies and gentlemen. Alyssa Carapriest. Thanks, Alyssa. <laughs> oh, I forgot I had to remove that. Whoops. So you get my staring face. How was that for a reaction, though? That was freaking cool, right? Yeah, she was definitely stunned, and now there's more to it. So <laughs> I'm reading the chat. Listen, dude. Um, let me go back up. Where was it? So, no, I did not I did not ask her out. Um, I think I probably have a better chance of seeing Jesus on a, on a Tuesday. I think that's how the phrase goes. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. Um, a degenerate, it would definitely be a degenerate date. That's for damn sure. But yeah, her reaction was killer. Like she was, she was so genuinely surprised. And um, yeah, it was just, it was just fun to kind of keep rattling them off and just to watch her reaction was amazing. So uh, that was fun. We did really good things, guys. Um, I will go back down through the list again just to uh, give the shout outs to. The people that um, helped us out, people donated. So, like I said, originally it was me that started this. Um, Jess, I have PayPal too. I guess we could do it that way too. Um, it's paypal.me slash that fuzzing 518 show. I mean, we could do it that way too. So, the list of people that donate are, are of course, uh, myself, Nipper Town Jim, the mayor, and Ralph Renner. All started with the fifty dollars. Um, yeah, I did beat you to it. Sorry, buddy. So, hip hop artist, uh, local hip hop artist, bonus. Mike Norman of Grace Under Fire, the Empire Pickle Company of Grand Island, Florida. Shout out to Mikey there. Um, the Grandstand Jockeys, Indigo Rose Ricky, our good friend Brian Cavanaugh. Bass player extraordinaire, Brian Kavanaugh. Also, to uh, thanks to Otis and Oliver's, Tipsy Moose. They both donated um, two $25 gift cards. So it would be 50 each, you know what I mean? Uh, Darla from Chrome Food and Spirits. I just got a something Venmo. 
I don't know if I can say who it is or not, but um, yeah, there was an, another twenty five dollar donation came in. So yeah, guys, I appreciate it very much. Um, so if I can say your name, then just say yes or something. So I don't want to. I don't want to call you out if you don't want to be mentioned on the show. Um, yeah, um, it's it's paypal.me paypal.me slash that fuzzing 518 show just if you wanted to do that so yeah guys it was it was awesome to talk to her she was she was a fun interview and uh that reaction just gets me that reaction absolutely gets me i'm still kind of like like i wouldn't say flustered but it's it's weird like when i started um you could tell in the interview when I started, I was a little, I was just a little bit nervous. It was kind of weird, but um, yeah, so that's that. So you can still, guys, listen, you don't have to, you don't have to go through me. Um, the link is right down here. I'll even follow it along as it goes. That's the link to Alyssa's campaign right there. And um, you can donate there. And if you're not, if you don't want to donate to the wish jump, you can just basically donate to, Make a wish, Northeast New York chapter. Um, all the money stays local within the 518 E38 area code. So um, it all stays in the capital region and gets granted to wishes for um, for our peeps, for our folks in the greater Nippertown area. There you go. I don't know, how's that? I'll throw that out there. But um, yeah, she is awesomely down there. She's very, um, she, she's very easy to talk to. And she's good at she's good. Did you see how good she was at the camera? I wonder why. <laughs> so listen, I have to um I have to go grab something real quick. So I'm going to play you a video. This time it is from our good friends from Selfish Needy Creatures. This is a video called Divine uh Define. I'm sorry, Divine. I'm thinking of myself. Divine. No, this is called Define. Selfish needy creatures, I'll be back in um, two shakes of a lamb's tail.
Selfish needy creature. Thank you, Vegas. Appreciate that, my friend. Um, talked to him. Uh, talked to him yesterday. Yesterday, the day before. Um, you know, I asked him if I could play the video. And, uh, what a cool dude. I miss Vegas. There's a lot of you guys out there. So I went and saw the. Uh, I went down to the Ancient Order of Hibernians Hall Saturday night, and I caught the, the Erotics Brother T and uh, Black Hat Elliot. First show I've seen in quite some time, and it was uh, it was fun. I had a lot of fun. Um, great, great, great show. You guys can see. Uh, oh, I uh, I actually saw the president of the Vark Bully Nation down there, and uh, <laughs> got to hang out with Jen for a little while. It was fun. Um, there is actually I actually did a review on Nipper Town of uh, Black Hat Elliot. Check it out. Nippertown.com. Go check it out. It's also on the Facebook page, too. You know, Facebook.com slash Nippertown. You guys go check that out there. So now that I got you guys trapped in here, no duct tape allowed, that's for sure. Um, now that I got you guys trapped in here, um, I'm thinking about trading into Fuzzy Express. I have a Dodge Ram right now. I'm thinking about getting rid of it. I don't know if I'm going to go to an SUV or not. I think I am, though. I think I'm going to run an SUV. So what do you guys think as far as SUVs go? Um, I'm thinking Jeep Grand Cherokee, honestly. I better move in. I don't have pants on. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> better move in. Nobody wants to see that. Well, maybe executive producer Dan, but that's about it. What do you guys think? Jeep Grand Cherokee? Deck it out with all fuzzy stuff on it. I always wanted to do like the green, like my green color for all of the emblems that are on the that are on the on the vehicle. Like do that this lime green color, whatever it is. This color, that color. What do you want to see? I don't know what that means. What do you want to see? Oh, I said because I said executive producer. I said I, did, I don't want to back up too far because I uh, I don't have pants on. So nobody wants to see that. And I said maybe uh, maybe executive producer Dan might want to see it. I'm looking at either Chevy Blazer or a Jeep Cherokee. Does anybody have? Um... Oh, the pukey face. Nice. Appreciate that, buddy. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. Yeah, so. Just mull it over, you guys. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know, please. Because um, I definitely can't afford like a uh, a base a Jeff Jeff Bezos vehicle. Did you guys see that? Bezos, the richest man in the world. Bezos went up into space. Oh, dude, I would definitely rock them anyway. Chevy Trail Boss, dude, that's a truck. I'm getting away from the truck. Plus, I don't have to um, compensate like some of us that we know. No, I don't know. So, so yeah, Bezos went into space. Mini, dude, I can rock a minivan. I'll bet you I can make it. I can rock a minivan. I'll bet you I can make a mini minivan look good. I'll bet you. I'll bet you I would style in the minivan. I would. You guys would. I would drive down the road, and you guys would just look like, man, fuzzy just vibes in that thing, man. I'm telling you, I would make a minivan cooler than the, oh, I got to be good. I have to behave. I would make a minivan cooler than the bottom of a penguin's feet. How's that? Is that good? I have to be, I have to be good. I have to behave today. 
And the other day I can not be here. Really? You're going to get the boot, dude. No, I can't go back. To, I didn't like the Kia. That thing was horrible. I had that too. That's what I had, dude. I didn't like it. Remember? I mean, it made me money, but wait, what is this? You're talking about Bezos. So you want a dick shaped? Oh, dude, I'm trying to behave. What are you doing? No, I don't. Well, maybe. Depends. Dude, 20 bucks is 20 bucks. All right. So, you know, it's called entrepreneur. A V dub bus. Old school. I wouldn't mind doing an old school V dub bus. That'd be cool. The new version of the bus? Are they are they crazy looking? I'll have to look at that. I'm gonna I'll look them up. Can you imagine fuzzy Uber? The fuzzy shake shack, that's right. If this van's a knocking, I mean if this van's a rocking, don't come in a a super bug. I should get a Volkswagen bug with a Hellcat engine in it. Huh? What do you think about that? This thing won't stay straight. There we go. I don't. I don't know. They're saying a new version of the VW bus. Tau, tau, tau. How do you say that? Toad, tau, tau. How do you say that? Toaz, to, topaz, to. Dude, how the fuck? How do you say that? To, toes, to. Wow, this, I'm struggling with this seriously. To, tofu, to, tongs, thongs, to, toes, toes, toes. I, I'm saying toes. I don't know how to say it. And I hate you for putting that word on there because now it's going to bother me like all night long. Thanks. You know what? Just for that, I'll go with toes. That's it's toes. The VW toes. Um, yeah, I'm gonna now that I'm I'll be awake all night. I'm just gonna message you all night. You'll suffer if I gotta suffer. You gotta suffer. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying, dude. If I get like a a minivan, I could do fuzzy Uber, right? What's the other one? What's the other? What's the other ride one? Uber and Lyft, right? Yeah, fuzzy Lyft. All right, bro. Sounds good, man. Thanks for stopping by. No, by the way, I did not. I did not ask her out. I, she, I, I think she's got a boyfriend, anyways. Fuber, yes, yes, Fuber. Why? Wow, see, you're good, man. Fuzzy DoorDash. I don't know, dude. I don't want. I don't want. I don't like people touching my food. I don't want to touch anybody else's food either. You know what I mean? Just get up and go to the restaurant. Stop being lazy. Go. So, anyways, uh, see you then. Thank you, bud. Um. Yeah, so Bezos and uh, Richard Branson both. Branson's was cooler looking. I, you, Mike, you're right. It Bezos's look like a Hitachi wand. You know what I'm saying? It looked like it looked like one of them Hitachi wands for sure. But um, yo, that dude was weightless in space, bro. In space, like. And, like, if you had that money or the means to just fly to space for, like, three, four minutes and then come back down, can you imagine that? You're talking to your friend on the phone. Will you stop putting eggplants up there? Um, Talking to your friend on the phone. Yeah, bro, I'm bored, man. I'm just going to run to space real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> up, down. That's pretty cool. You got to admit, that is pretty cool. You can just go to space whenever the hell you want to. Probably going to get a lot of clearance for that, like, Air traffic control and stuff like that. You know what I mean? You probably got your clearance for it. But. Would you guys go? Would you? She asked me that question. Would you guys go to space if you had like the means to? If you had the money or if you had your own Hitachi wand? Later then. Would you guys go up into space? I I totally would, man. I mean, there's probably bugs in the system still, but I would totally go. No, why not, dude? It's just like a fast airplane. Don't just say we're leaving. Go. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, I want to kick you out so bad. 
No, you wouldn't go either, Jess. What is what's up? Why not? How come you guys wouldn't go? I know, I know, Mike, you don't want to ride in the Hitachi wand. I get that, but like Francis was like a cool like plane that split off of another plane. It looked like two planes on the side, but they were like they were the, the jet boosters. And then it like separated from that and then phew, took off. Bring the kids with you. It's only like a 90 minute trip. They can go too. Float around. Oh, Freddie would love space. Are you kidding me? He loves this show. He's gotta be a little bit crazy. All right, let's look at the Venmo again. Let's see what's up. What's the new guys? Um those gift cards are still available, by the way. Fifty dollars, fifty dollars, anything fifty and above, um, you get one one set of them. One twenty one totaling fifty dollars. So either Tipsy Moose for fifty dollars or um Otis and Oliver's for fifty dollars. Oh, Freddie, poor little guy. I don't know. You know what? We'll make an exception just because Freddie's cool. So he can go with his lazy eye, but just him. Nobody else. Executive producer Dan and his lazy eye. Does he have a lazy eye? He doesn't have a lazy eye. We can make up the fact that he has one, though, can't we? Is it slander? So I said I was going to go an hour on the show today, and I'm like, here I am just yapping again. I'm just, I'm just sitting here yapping again. I should keep it down to an hour because if this thing actually does get viewed by somebody, I don't want I don't want to get in too much trouble, you know? All right. So executive producer Dan does not have a lazy eye. All right, guys, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to cut this week's show a little bit short. So we're at hour seven right now. Um, just in case I don't want to say anything that's going to get me in trouble or <laughs> degrade the video. You know what I'm saying? We did a good job on this one. We kicked ass with the donations and stuff, so I don't want to do nothing that's going to screw this up. So um, I'm going to take my leave of you. Um, what I'll do is I will play a video to bring us out. We're going to play Faced Me to You. Um, Faced is going to be playing on one of the boat cruises. Make sure you guys get your tickets for that. before they're all... That one's the one that's close to being sold out. I think there's like six or seven tickets left. So make sure you guys get with one of the band members quickly. Um, either face or whoever's playing with them. I'm gonna give them a plug. Fuck it. I mean, hell with it. Damn it. You guys are killing me. So August 13th on the Dutch Apple Friday, the 13th cruise featuring Faced, the Phoenix and the Raven, and Psychomantium. Um, 7 p.m. Like I said, tickets to the bands. Either one of the three bands should be able to get you to a ticket, but there's not many left, so make sure you get there there. So that's it for me, guys. I appreciate you guys coming. I appreciate all the generous donations that came in. Um Bonus, Mike Norman, Empire Pickle Company of Grand Island, Florida. Um, the Grandstand Jockeys, Indigo Rose Riki, DK Enterprises, uh, Brian Cavanaugh, Otis and Oliver's, Tipsy Moose, Dollar from Chrome, Collar City Painting with a double whammy, $100 donation. Thank you guys so much for that. Um, the one that came through on the phone, Otis and Oliver uh, gift cards and the Tipsy Moose gift cards are still available. Again, guys, $50 and above. You get one of those sets of gift cards. So you get a $50 pair of gift card, $50. I don't want to say it wrong because it sounds like I'm giving 100 away. You'll get $50 to either Otis and Oliver's or to Tipsy Moose. So the first two in the Venmo are going to get them. So make sure you guys do that. There's Make-A-Wish Northeast New York there. There's Alyssa's link down there. It is all over my page. If you need it, message me. I'll get it to you. But. That's the show for this week, guys. Next week, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Thursday evening. We do it every week at Thursday at 7 o'clock. Make sure you guys are tuning in. I appreciate every single one of you guys. Just remember, the toes that you step on on the way to the top are connected to the asses that you have to kiss on your way back down. So stay humble, everybody. Faced me to you. I'll see you guys next week later.
Thank you, Jess, from Notice Calls. Appreciate it.